Robin Vigna's famous comment about the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. Uh, I understand the effectiveness of mathematics, but why is it unreasonable? I think it's unreasonable to expect that a piece of uh, mathematical technique will appear again and again and often in places where we do not expect it. Like, for instance, you know, periodic motion, the orbits of the planets, yeah. the math that came <laughs> along with that. You can also apply it uh, in atoms, in you know, analyzing sound, uh, even in fluctuations in economics. So every so what time... Specific, what specific math is, is there? So that would be the mathematics of uh, Fourier transforms, you know, of, of fluctuations and analyzing the spectrum. That's what we use different to... Different frequencies. Different frequencies, what right. we use to analyze sound. Um, and uh, I think Wigner in his essay even makes the remark that you know, all of these applications underlying is the circle. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you see in many mathematical formulas, you see the Greek letter pi which actually is about the ratio of a circumference and diameter of a circle. Mm. But often it's not at all obvious where these circles are. So math has this wonderful ability to pop up again and again and again. And sometimes they say you know, nothing as useful as a great theory. Mm -hmm. And why this is the case, why actually mathematics is uh, the natural language of nature and it's able to speak to so many different topics, I think it is a miracle because you could argue that perhaps some of the applications are, well, they are, you know, our brain has been trained to see everyday uh, phenomena and therefore we develop math to capture that. But then you go into these unknown territories, you go to uh, subatomic physics or you go to the very edge of the cosmos and again the same mathematical equations are working. So. That actually, I think Wigner himself says it's a gift and it keeps on giving, but we should be very, very grateful for that gift because it allows us actually to address so many key issues in science using the same mathematical vocabulary. And on radically different scales, I mean, that, that just seems remarkable. It is remarkable that, we, uh, that there is no kind of sign forbidden for humans <laughs> once you enter the subatomic scale things that are very far removed from our intuition. And often I think it's actually the, the mathematical formulas that guide us. You know, it's the one thing that, that we can kind of uh, hold on to. And if you ask me, you know, what is a electron? And they're all images we have you know, of a little particle sure. of a wave. I think at the core, it is the solution to the Dirac equation. You know, it's actually that <laughs> mathematical equation is I think the closest that we can get for our sense of reality. So it's, it, we haven't actually, I think, seen any circumstances yet in certainly in fundamental science where math has not been able to guide us to, uh, to solve the mysteries. So uh, how does the physical world and math work together? Because the assumption today when you study it is that the math is there the calculus is there, yes. and so we apply math to understand the physical world. But that wasn't necessarily the history of how calculus even occurred, and even today there's physics that can, uh, can, uh, can illuminate or even, even uncover areas of pure mathematics, yes. not applied mathematics. Yes. Well, I think there's a continuous arms race between mm -hmm. the progress in science and the progress in mathematics. And someone is ahead, like indeed Newton had to uh, discover essentially calculus in order to formulate his theories of mechanics. Uh, Einstein was uh, very lucky that there was already a theory of Riemannian geometry that he could use in general relativity. So I think nowadays... Which he had to study. <laughs> yeah, he had to study and had to find friends that at least could explain it to him. But it, it was developed 50 years earlier. Mm. I think right now, certainly in terms of fundamental physics, the, really the mysteries of quantum theory, uh, they are kind of level. So we see that uh, certain mathematics is extremely useful to understand quantum theory, but uh, I think we all have a deep sense that uh, still certain concept has to emerge and that mathematics is in some way an environmental science. You know, uh, certain natural concepts emerge once it is applied in a certain context. Mm -hmm. Now, if you move to these kind of esoteric, esoteric areas of, of quantum physics, of, of cosmology about space and time, we all feel, I think, that math is struggling and that there are natural concepts 
that actually quantum physics suggests to uh, say one thing, like in quantum theory, everything happens in some sense at the same time. Mm. This is a wonderful phrase of a sum over histories. Mm. So, uh, and sometimes said, anything that's allowed is obligatory. <laughs> and it's all happening. So, if you're a quantum theorist, you basically have to see everything at the same time. And that actually is also a natural language for mathematics to do so, because mathematicians want to study category of objects. But nature has found the perfect language to study these huge groups of, of spaces, of numbers. So what you see currently is that ideas from physics, from quantum physics, can be applied to very ex, uh, abstract areas in math, like studying knots, like uh, circles embedded in three space, or studying uh, the, the geometry of exotic higher dimensional manifolds. And so there are mathematicians who say, well, I don't want to have anything to do with <laughs> physics because it's not rigorous. The yeah. physicists do not know what they're talking about. <laughs> and then there is this tsunami of physics coming their way and suddenly they're flooded mm. because there is a new physics intuition that cuts across the mathematical intuition and certainly connects things that nobody thought were possible to connect. And often I say that you know, the, the most undervalued symbol in mathematics is the equal sign. Now, if you take a beautiful mathematical formula, it looks like A equals B. And often A and B come from completely different worlds. Mm. And physics and science is a way to produce these kind of equations. Equals M, e equals mc squared, the most famous case. So you get these formulas and then mathematicians look at it and what are A and B doing in one <laughs> sentence? <you know? laughs> These are completely different worlds and you're bringing them together. And that gives a tremendous amount of excitement.